In this episode, I'll be doing a review of the Hot Toys Darth Maul, which I received a little over a month ago. Thank you for tuning in to Aaron Meets World. My name's Aaron, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel for more helpful reviews and nerd culture in general, as well as a lot of other things I have coming down the pipeline, which I'm not quite ready to talk about yet, but I have quite a bit of content planned and I am planning season two as we speak. Anyways, let's jump into the review of Darth Maul. Uh, so like I said, I received him a little over a month ago, and you know, he's what you would expect for a Hot Toys Darth Maul. The head sculpt is really good. Uh, you still get all of the details, the pores and everything that you would normally get off of a normally painted head sculpt, uh, but with, of course, his tattoos as part of that. He has his horns on the top of his head, which are sharp. So you actually want to be careful when touching them because they are quite sharp. Um, his outfit is very well tailored. I especially like his main outfit uh, that you would see on him right here. He does have his draped robe as well, but I actually don't care for that as much. I do like his uh, I guess you'd say his fighting outfit from the end of the movie, much better than his robed version. He also does have a second head sculpt, which is him doing his kind of angry face. And I personally prefer the plain one better, but it, it's still cool looking. I think I could see myself maybe using that when the Qui-Gon figure is finally released and then he's actually in a lightsaber battle, so that might make more sense. Or, you know, possibly being cut in half, that would be a good expression for that too. Uh, he does come with quite a few accessories. I didn't get the version of him that came with the speeder, um, but even so, he has his binoculars, he has a droid that you can put on a pole. He has a wrist piece where he can, I guess, control the droid. I don't remember exactly how it happened in the movie, but I believe that's what it's for. And he has his swinging blade lightsabers where it looks, or where it's supposed to look like it's kind of blurred. He also has a cap that you can put on one end of his double-bladed lightsaber, so it splits in half, it pulls apart, and it has a cap you can put on one of them to make it look like it was cut in half. Uh, so that's cool. I haven't actually tried that yet, but it's a cool addition. So maybe if they do an episode one Obi-Wan, that'd be a cool way to display him. But uh, in general, I feel like if you are going to collect prequel Hot Toys figures, this is just one you can't skip uh, for completionist's sake, uh, but even so, Darth Maul is a really cool character despite having barely any screen time at all in the prequel trilogy. I feel like he made kind of the biggest impression actually, even not appearing in episode two and three when I think of a character that kind of just embodies the prequels for me. If you're not gonna, you know, go with the obvious choices like Anakin or Obi-Wan, uh, Darth Maul definitely just brings me thoughts of the entire trilogy despite him only being in the first movie. So uh, he's, he's a great figure and I mean it's really just not one you'd want to skip in my opinion if you do like the prequels. If you're gonna get one character from episode one, I mean I feel like it's the character you'd want. He's the coolest character from that movie. So he gets my endorsement. Now, having him here, obviously I have him here right next to Count Dooku. Is he as good of a character? Standing next to Count Dooku, I actually feel like Darth Maul doesn't look as impressive, uh, partially because I guess maybe Ray Park is a shorter actor. So then the figure comes in shorter, while Christopher Lee must have been much taller because he's a much taller figure. I mean, Darth Maul is, like, at Count Dooku's shoulder. So that he doesn't look as impressive when he's next to him on the shelf. 
Now, in battle against Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon, he might look a lot more impressive. So, your mileage will vary, but again, like I said, I just feel like it's a character you can't skip. Of all the villains from the prequel trilogy, I feel like he's the one you'd want. He's the coolest. I mean, unless they do a really cool Sidious, which I'm hoping they'll do. Uh, but yeah, that's my opinion there. I just feel like he's an unskippable character if you're going to collect prequel trilogy characters. I feel like you have to have him. Uh, now, if you're on the fence about him, if he's a character you don't have to have, I feel like that answers your question right there. If he's a character you don't have to have, why would you get him if you don't have to have him? You could save the money there and get a figure that you feel more like you have to have. Uh, that's my two cents on it. And that's, you know, goes into a lot of my decision-making process especially when there's only going to be one version of a character. Although there is the Solo A Star Wars Story older version of, of Darth Maul, which does look pretty cool. I'm not going to get it. Uh, mainly because my focus for Star Wars figures will be completing the original trilogy and then the prequel trilogy, if I do continue. But it probably won't go beyond that into the one-shots. I don't have any Rogue One figures, although I kind of wish I would have grabbed Jin as a one-off. Um, but anyways, that's how I feel about it. He's just an unskippable character. So what are you going to do? You should pick him up if you're going to go into the prequels. And I'd imagine most of you probably already have or have him on payment plan or something. Uh, because... You know, if you feel the same way that he's a character you just have to have, you probably got him. Anyways, please subscribe if you haven't. Please like, please share. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you next time.